Hey, so I wanted to do a video real quick on magnets. Um, again, some on my kick. So some potential uses for them around the house and uh, my opinion on high power magnets and medium power magnets and the germicidal slash biological impacts, benefits, risks. So this is where I'm at. A low powered magnetic field. And to quantify that, uh, one through five uh, millitesla. Um, so like a refrigerator magnet strength is probably beneficial for human health and probably beneficial for food preservation. Uh, freezing meat was the study that I, I read. Um, it was a little wishy-washy because with all of this stuff, it's about power density, uh, distance, time of exposure, and but it was fairly conclusive that high-powered magnets were damaging to uh, food and um, weaker magnets were, were beneficial uh, in that range, uh, one to five millitesla. Uh, and weaker than that, there was no impact at all. Um, so the idea would be some sort of ionic alignment of the salts, um, some germicidal benefit. I'm not, you know, the iron in the blood of the meat, uh, although that iron is different, it's not magnetic. Whatever the mechanism, it wasn't quite clear. It does seem fairly conclusive um, that there is some benefit to a weak magnetic uh, force on food and uh, human, probably human, uh, life. Now this is where it's uh, fact versus practical application. Practical application says, okay, well, the magnet strength drops off so severely in order to maintain that, um, I'm going to have to have a magnet on either side of every, uh, of every hamburger patty, you know, it's going to have to be a magnet, um, for bread in, in your freezer and cause, cause the magnetic field strength drops off so quickly. Uh, even a thick steak um, would probably not be treated to that dosage in the middle. So it's not very practical, I think, to look at using these magnets, or any magnets really, uh, for food preservation, although I could see in a large scale industrial or extremely long-term um, situation where you're where you're really trying to optimize uh, nutritional value 25 35 45 years out and that's your that's your mission um, and you have the systems available to you to uh, it wouldn't be that hard basically to do it it's just not really worth it. Like you would have to have sheets of weak uh, magnets, magnetic sheets, they have them. Um, they're not terribly expensive, but you'd have to basically line the inside of your fridge, the inside of your freezer, um, and all the shelves, you just line the entire inside with magnetic. Uh, material you know and then you would probably reap enough benefit uh, and if you were again doing some sort of large or industrial scale uh, you you know you could come up with a way to make it work it's just for my life I just 
I don't think that's really practical. I have long-term food storage if I need it that has a shelf life probably left of, you know, 18, 19 years. Um, and its nutritional value, I'm sure, is terrible and has degraded further, uh, but it will keep me alive. And um, quite frankly, I don't have the time or patience. I just don't think it's going to yield the benefits that justify the efforts. But I do think that there are applications um, where the power can be focused in a much smaller area in order to capitalize more on it. In other words, instead of going for the uh, life force, let's go for the death force and a much smaller area. Instead of trying to do the life force, which is the medium strength magnets on a much larger area, um, let's disregard that for the time being and, and focus on uh, preventing uh, bacteria growth and um, magnetic filtration and etc. So this is what I've come up with for additional things. Now I put the, the magnets on my vent and I kind of was like, eh, it's a goof. You know, I, I, do I think it has an impact? Of course, everything has an impact. It's kind of in line with putting magnetic uh, wallpaper on the inside of your refrigerator. Is your food going to last longer? Yes, it, it, your food will last longer. You might add a day to a week to your expiration dates, maybe. But is it worth it to me? No, because I don't really run that close to my expiration dates. And it's just not worth it to me. I think this is something similar to that. Is this going to change the air quality in this room? Yes, absolutely. Is that change going to really impact my health? You know, maybe in a slight way, but I don't think it's going to impact my life expectancy. Right? So, going to the slight edge theory, is it making a beneficial difference? I believe it is. Is that difference going to be measurable in any impactful way in my life? Probably not. But the accumulative benefit of many things like that could which is why I still engage in it. And at some point might engage in the uh, magnetic wallpaper because slight edge. But at this point, no. And yes, that's, that's where kind of the line of bullshit is. Um, where else am I uh, dedicating this uh, newfound force? Um, what I came up with was I have an intake air damper, which I strongly suggest as a HVAC professional. Um, it's from a, think of it like a, a, a military tactic, right? What is the most beneficial fortress you could imagine? Like, what's the ideal objective of, of a castle or a fort? You want one controlled point of egress and you want as many possible points of regress that you can have right so you want to be able to see who's ever coming at you and who's ever coming at you to be only to coming at you in a very controlled area and you want to have the freedom of mobility to go any direction you want right because that's to your tactical advantage well, with the air in your house, if you have an intake air damper, your entire house should be, unless it is incredibly loose, or you're bringing an incredibly small volume of air, um, your entire house should be under positive pressure. Which basically means that any leaks, air leaks that you have in your house are leaking out, not in, unless you get a strong gust of wind from that side of the house, which point that side of the house has a higher pressure than your house and you might have a small leak in, but it would have to be greater than the positive pressure your house is under. So, in still air, to be precise, if you have an outdoor air damper, your house is exclusively leaking air out 
and you are bringing air in through one control point and that point well, for me is an outdoor air damper um, that I run through a uh, HEPA filter and then treat with a UV light. Um, so this is the, the additional steps I've taken to excuse uncontrollable. Um, so basically the outdoor air damper as you can imagine has a about one inch gap uh, between neodymium magnets that make a bar face across. It's only about a four inch uh, louver door style damper. Um, so it's got a two inch uh, bar face, uh, about an inch gap between them. And then on the outside, uh, two others. So my idea is twofold. Believe it or not, uh, there's also a mesh filter behind it. So this is this is where it gets a little bit into like the cooler side of it. So Carrier has a technology out there called Capture Kill. It's actually one of the best hair filters on the market. It utilizes electrostatic. Um, filtration along with UV light along with a uh, media filter right and the idea is to hold all uh, viruses and bacteria on the paper filter with the electrostatic filter um, long enough to kill it with the UV light and it's highly effective because that is the shortfall of UV light is that the air is moving so quickly it doesn't have the germicidal effects that is really desired and why people install them. They're trying to ionize all bacteria and viruses that are in the air or in water droplets in the air. Um, and so by basically putting these things in our magnetic tractor beam, we can hold in, in, a, in a filter material, hold them still long enough to ionize them and effectively kill them. Right? So that's like the top-notch technology that works that's on the market right I don't have that if I did I'd probably regret it because the filters cost so much that it's really kicking the pants I have the poor man's version okay so but I've I'm, I'm upgrading with these magnets so hear me out so two things that these high power magnets can do and um, it takes a fair amount of time but they can uh, they can break down pollen right so they can reduce allergies uh, they can kill bacteria they can prevent mold um, so basically that's like the nice stuff the prepper in me that's thinking not nice stuff every day okay i'm getting a slight edge i'm making my life a little bit better you know maybe i'm improving my health in some intangibly small way that again will cumulatively add up to something significant enough to measure um but probably not you know whatever and then there's the shtf does this serve a purpose? And I am going to argue that in the case, in this, I've, I heard this before from a doctor. Um, he said that there's less than a 1% chance, and he was talking about Europe at the time, but it less than a, or not less than, greater than 0% chance, which is probably a 0.0001% chance, but greater than zero of a uh, nuclear fallout from a damaged reactor in Ukraine uh, and that gas passing over Europe. So nuclear fallout, a, a radioactive cloud, it's not necessarily the, the radioactive isotopes, it's the radioactive elements those isotopes have already been absorbed into uh, specifically like metals so 
one of the things that I was reading up on um, was talking about the cleanup at Fukushima, Fukushima, whatever. Um, the the nuclear reactor that melted down because of a wave in uh, Japan, and they were using this iron material, and it was like an activated uh, iron, a special type, and they were basically using ultrasound to push it into the sand and then magnets to pull it out. That's what I got out of it. And when they pull it out, it had absorbed radiation, right? And the reason they were using iron was because it was magnetic. But in my mind, I was like, okay, well, apparently there's an affinity there. So I'm thinking that there may be a... Uh, some sort of radiological protection. If the radioactive fallout is a magnetic metal, and it's my understanding that it certainly could be. Now, it's not my only line of defense. It's just the first line of defense. This is the, the hood on the outside of my house. But the thing that it, that's nice about it, it's literally an area this big. So for me to put eight magnets on it, and literally have the entire thing bathed in a very dense, very powerful magnetic field that'll last 15 or 20 years um, is an easy goal economically and uh, with my resources. And I, it yields a, a really big benefit because that is essentially um, treating whatever it's worth all the air that comes into my house and the fact that there's a mesh net behind it which is prone to getting plugged up from my experience i just had to unplug it with all sorts of pollen so this is where my head's at the pollen gets stuck on the on the mesh net and the magnets help break it up into its smaller constituents um and I'm, I'm actually a believer that just like with the honeybees, um, once the pollen is broken down into its smaller constituents, then it's actually uh, beneficial to not getting allergies as opposed to being exposed to the pollen in its, its large form um, that leaves you all plugged up, getting exposed to the pollen all broken down in, in its smaller uh, chewed up form is actually healthy. So that's turning a negative into a positive. She came to visit. Um, and then last one, real quick, because DV obviously wants my attention. Well, um, the filter dryer on your refrigeration system. So one thing I've seen in a lot of older compressors is, you know, metal shavings. Um, it's not terribly common but I'm sure it's more common than I know. And the reason I say that is because the metal shavings are probably so small that you can't see them. And they accumulate and they just reduce the viscosity of your compressor oil. So that's where I put another one, just one magnet and just on the filter dryer itself, um, just up right on the bottom of the filter dryer so that Anything that gets shaved off of that inside of that compressor um, that goes in that filter dryer is going to stay there. Um, it's not going to go out and plug up my TXV. Uh, it's not going to recirculate and uh, potentially uh, lead to more compressor damage. So, and the same thing with your engine oil. I've seen them um, people sticking the magnets on their uh, on their oil. Uh, caps and their oil filters um, to catch metal shavings. Um, the only thing that some of those new engine oils they're putting magnetic fluid in the uh, in the oil itself in the hopes of it adhering to the the cylinders, uh, you know, during cold starts and that sort of stuff. So you might want to check to see what type of oil you have before you use a magnet on it because it might already be doped with a magnetic um, ferrofluid. But the, uh, the, um, 
refrigerant oil definitely is not. So it's it's definitely a good option and you're not going to damage the refrigerant. It's exposed to much stronger magnetic fields than that. Um, it's, it's just a good idea to put a magnet, a powerful magnet, on your filter dryer. So that's that's where oh yeah one more thing so i got on my um intake air damper it's blanketed like i said i got about eight or ten magnets on something that's you know probably six or seven inches long and then on the inside right so that's the intake air damper it connects with my other return duct and then it goes through my HEPA filter. And then after it goes through my HEPA filter, um, it's exposed to a UV light and a humidifier pad, which bypasses it and could potentially recirculate a few times, a percentage of it a few times. So there's a larger exposure to the UV light. But where I put the magnets on my return duct is basically a perimeter loop all around where my UV light is. So the idea is that electricity can travel easier in a magnetic field than it can uh, without a magnetic field. So that the fact that all around the magnetic, uh, all around the ultraviolet light um, is a perimeter loop, you know, spaced, it's a big duck, so I spaced them out like, five or six inches apart, but pretty much all the way around three quarters or half, because it's bumped up against the press, half the half the duct is uh, lined with hardcore magnets, you know, the powerful neodymium magnets. And my theory is that it'll increase the kill rate or the efficacy or the... Um, reduce the resistance of the air um, as the UV light travels through the air because the UV light will travel and then hit those magnetic waves and then travel faster, well not faster, but easier along those magnetic waves and if there's any uh, bacteria or virus or whatever that is in that crosshair that's a also in a magnetic wave and being hit with the um, with the UVC light at the same time. It's my theory that it might it's is worthy of a test, which I'm not doing, but it's worthy of a test. Um, that it would reduce the time um, to ionize that uh, microorganism. In other words, it would die faster. Uh, because it's in the static magnetic field and the UV light at the same time. So that's the locations that I picked because uh, I feel like they would have the biggest impact on my indoor air quality. The outdoor air damper and around, not around where the light is, but around where the light is so that the light will travel that way um, easier. And, and that's pretty much it um, in the water, the water structuring and having a few in the bedroom because this is where I spend all my time. Yeah, that's pretty much it.